moving out of your comfort zone. The anthropologist and the woman science specialist, they both study prison. In the beginning, there is nothing like prison because in our society, we don't have rules and regulations. But as time goes on, the population in the society began to increase. And for any society to grow exponentially, and for our society to grow very fast, we need a system to manage it. And we are going to call it good behavior, etiquette, rules, laws. And if you break those rules, we are going to punish you by sending you to prison. Our society today writes its rules and regulations and it codifies them, which then create average for the average. Our society today is nothing more than a system of normalized averages and a normal woman being should be like this. Our parents tell us to go to school, have good grace, get good job, get married. We are told all this because our parents come from a society with a system of normalized averages. Let me tell you something. We live in an echo chamber and we are just surrounded with the same thinking. The environment we live today has engulfed or consumed our unlimited power and replaced it with limited power. We live in this perception of a perception of ourselves. My identity is made by what my parents think I should be. My identity is made by what my university think I should achieve in life. My identity is made by what my society think I should believe in. While you are living in that bubble and that echo chamber, getting what you truly want to do from your mind, it seems impossible. I know that most people don't love the current educational system due to the discouraging testimony from our graduate outside there. Their life is not well emanating and the fake promises given to us by our government. So, that process of self-excavation and self-actualization must require moving out of your comfort zone. I'm not saying you should move away from your father's house or from your mother's house. But what I'm trying to say is to move away from the normalized average thinking people and expose yourself to new role models, to new ideas, to new experiences. Because you cannot become what you never see. If I never saw public speakers, I would never have wanted to be among them. If I never saw successful business builders, I would never have wanted to be among them. If I never saw billionaires, I would never have wanted to be among them because I would not know how it looked like or how it feel like. Your comfort zone is your danger zone. Your comfort zone will pin you down. Your comfort zone will shrink you and it will never give you the 100% opportunity to grab the real opportunity. Let's do this exercise together. I want you to pick a pen and paper and draw a circle. Inside this circle, I want you to list out everything you already have. Maybe you are living in a rented apartment. Write it down. Maybe your monthly income is 50,000, 100,000. Write it down. Maybe you are riding Toyota Camry V6. Write it down. Write down everything you have right now. Now, move out of the circle. Outside the circle, I want you to list out everything you want, but you don't have them right now. Maybe you want to be living in a mansion or in a palace. Write it down. Maybe you want your monthly income to be 1 million, 2 million, or 30 billion. Write it down. Maybe you want to be living in a fashion places that you never imagined of. Just write everything down. Now, take a look at what is inside the circle and what is outside the circle. Everything you have right now, they are all inside the circle. Everything you want, but you don't have them right now, they are all outside the circle. For you to get what is outside the circle, you need to expand the circle. You need to move out of the circle. The circle is your income zone. And your income zone is your danger zone. 
and your danger zone is a prison. So I'm challenging you today to break the prison. Let me ask you one question. Did you know someone who still have the same dream, the same goal, living in the same rented apartment, having the same group of friends, and still in the same position as he was last 10 years ago? Did you know someone like that? Why did you think most people remain stagnant for so long? Hmm. The Yoba people do say, that ewe toba kwela roshe, oman dosheni. When poverty stays too long with people, they feel it no more. Now listen to me carefully, because I'm about to reveal to you how our environment is destroying our greatness in life. First of all, the reason why most people remain stagnant for so long is because they have impotent goals. They have goals that don't drive them. They have goals that don't motivate them. They have goals that don't inspire them. They have small goals. Most people, they operate at the level of survivor. And that is the reason why they set goals that can make them to survive. They set goals of paying bill. They set goals of buying clothes. They set goals of buying shoes. They set goals of buying enough food stuff. They set goals that can make them to survive. There is a funny Yoruba adage that says, that onje toba ti kuro ninu ishe, ishe ti bushe. Let me tell you something. Ishe she she bere niyo. According to one of the greatest philosophers, Mr. Socrate, he said that worthless people live to eat and drink. People of what eat and drink to live. Listen to me carefully. It is a simple law of psychology that you can never achieve more than you think of achieving. If you think of paying bill, if you think of buying clothes, if you think of buying enough food stuff that can make you to survive, you can never achieve more than that. For you to win in this world of overwhelming complexity and tremendous competition, you must see farther, aim higher, think bigger than the people in the society. According to one of the greatest public speakers of all time, Onone Shulaimon, he said that if your goal is not big enough to overpower any problem you can imagine of, then your small goals will be busy attempting those problems. According to my role model, Mr. Les Brown, the best motivational speaker on planet, he said that I have discovered over time that most people fail in life not because they aim too high, and miss but because they aim too low and they eat the target the reason why most people don't set big goals they don't have big dreams they don't have they don't aim high is because of the environment they live the environment we live today operate at the level of fixed belief as growing children we are great imitators we master and believe in what our parents believe in without questioning. We believe in their limitation. We believe in their patterns of living. We do the religion they are doing and we follow the instruction they are given. Some of them even decide on the kind of woman we must marry. They will even tell you with conviction, Sulaiman, this is the woman I want for you. Some of them assume our ability. They assume our capacity. They assume what we can do and what we can undo. And that is the reason why some of them decide our career. I could remember when my mother told me not to follow the career in public speaking, but to do something else, either to learn trade work or petty businesses. I then asked my mama, the mama, why must I learn trade work or petty businesses? She said, I don't know. I asked her again, the mama, why must I learn all these businesses? She said, I don't know. You see, our parents give us limitation based on their limited psychology and the emotional patterns they learned from the past. This reminds me of the story of a young newlywed woman who was preparing ham of a turkey for Christmas dinner. She carefully cut off the end of the ham before placing it in frying pan for roasting. Her husband asked her, Why did you cut off the end of the ham? She replied, I don't know, because my mother always prepared it that way. 
So later in the day, when talking to her mother, she asked her mother why she always cut off the end of the ham before roasting it. Her mother replied, I don't know because my mother always prepared it that way. So they decided to call her grandmother on the phone to ask her why she always cut off the end of the ham before roasting it. Her grandmother replied, she said, because my pan is too small and it will never fit into my roasting pan. You see, all their life, people do what they are familiar with without willing to change or question it. All their life, they do it that same way because they believe that that is how it is and that is how it has always been. All my life, we have been told by our friends that our goals are too big, our expectations are too high, our dreams are too high. They preach to us that the rich will continue to be rich and the poor will continue to be poor. They preach to us that the only way you can be successful in life is when you have connection. They believe that it is impossible. These people have forgotten that impossibility can only be found in a dictionary of a fool. Maybe they don't know. If they know, maybe they don't remember that what is possible today was impossible yesterday. Listen to me carefully. History has been read and it has also been written by people with imagination. There is a story of a boy who was sleeping during mathematics class. He woke up as the bell was rang for closing time and he looked at the blackboard and copied the two problems that were there. He assumed that they were the assignment for the day. So the boy went home and tried those two problems. The boy, he couldn't figure out answer to anyone. But the boy kept trying for the rest of the week. And finally, he got answer to one and he brought it to class. The teacher was surprised. The student solved the question the teacher couldn't solve. If the student had known that the teacher couldn't solve that particular question, the student will not even make any effort to try. So that is how our environment is designed. Our environment gives us limitation and they believe that it is impossible to aim high and achieve it. Even though if you try to set big goals or to have big dreams, people will criticize you and they will be searching for ways to drag you down. People are just like a crab. If you put a bunch of crab in a bucket, you don't need to cover it to keep them from escaping. Because if a crab start climbing, the ones on the bottom will always pull the climbing ones down to their level. Majority of people don't want you to succeed. They want you to be down there in gutter with them. I am the author of this book and this book will never come into reality if I don't leave my environment. People in the environment, they will drag you down to their level and beat you with experience. And that is the reason why I call the environment we live today modern prison. And you must break this prison. You must be crazily angry to grab the energy and the motivation I'm giving you right now and break the fence confining you. A university student once asked me, that what can I expose myself to in order to change my life? I then reply by asking him this question, that what did you want to become in the future? He said, I want to become a millionaire. I said, no problem. That is a great idea. Big problem. Can you spend your money to buy books on how to become a millionaire? Can you spend two hours in reading those books every single day? Can you go online to listen to the speeches of millionaire? Can you get a mentor that can guide you in the journey of becoming a millionaire? So these are the ways I believe you can expose yourself. So at the end of the day, what will really matter will not be the money or the millions you have in your bank account. But what will really matter is what you become in the process of becoming a millionaire. Most importantly, you must become a very serious student of life by becoming a voracious reader. No more parting. 
no more procrastination, no more distraction, and no more bad habit. In conclusion, I want you to ask yourself this question, that if I continue to live the way I'm living right now, or if I continue to be doing what I'm doing right now, where will I be in the next five years? If you don't like the answer, it is time to change the way you live. It is time to expose yourself to new role models, to new ideas. According to Abat Einstein, he said that you cannot solve a problem with the same thinking you use while creating them. And it is insanity for a living organism to be doing the same thing over and over again and be expecting different results. In the beginning of moving out of your comfort zone, it will be hard, it will be difficult. But remember that you have to be comfortable, being uncomfortable, if you really want to be successful in life. Don't forget that life is a fighting territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. If you don't sacrifice for what you want, what you want become the sacrifice. God bless.